Hey kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. And welcome back to another bike review here on the channel. Today I'm back on the Royal Enfield HNTR 350, or the Hunter 350 as I prefer to call it. And uh, what I intend to do today is bring you my ultimate review of the bike. An in-depth look at what the bike's like to ride in various conditions, the specification and so on. So if you're interested in the newest Royal Enfield, well it might be the newest Royal Enfield, it's certainly the newest one I've ridden, then stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in once again. And today, as I mentioned, I'm out and about again on the HNTR 350 from Royal Enfield. I've already done one video on this bike. If you haven't seen that, maybe go and check that out. Not now, at the end of the video, but that was my sort of initial ride review. We just kind of told you whether I thought I was going to like the bike or not. And I kind of decided on that one pretty much straight off that I did like the bike. There's something about this that I like. It's, it's honest, basic simplicity. It's just back to basics, fun riding. I really do like it. But, uh, that was literally after I'd just had the bike dropped off. Well, I've had a chance now to ride the bike for just over a week. I basically used it as my daily ride during that time to kind of understand the bike as much as I can. And I still really love the bike, I have to say. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to go through it a bit more in depth and talk a bit about the spec, that sort of thing. As well as uh, show you what it's like, you know, riding it dark, in the dark, and uh, on different types of road, that type of thing. So let's start the review in the usual way. And just take a look at the bike some of the little uh, design touches on it okay so looking at the design features on the bike then front to back starting at the front and you can see we've got uh, this wheel on here not a spoked wheel so this really it's kind of a retro style bike but it's not uh, it's not old-fashioned it's kind of a modern retro I'd, I'd say that it's thoroughly modern technology on this even though it's in the style of an old-fashioned bike so yeah non-spoked front wheel but blacked out on the on that wheel the engine too all blacked out as you can see uh, we'll talk about the specs of the engine in a minute but uh, all blacked out I think looks really nice and matches that little stubby exhaust on here that sounds really good uh, coming around the back end we've got these uh, big old lights on the back I'm not entirely sure about those but uh, hey ho that you might like them uh, coming around the side what else to point out uh, the I quite like this fuel cap the actual um, handlebars and the controls on here again these are the similar to what we saw on the Meteor that they're these kind of old style switch gear that's rotary that I quite like actually uh, similarly on this side for the lights that's a bit more tricky um, but we'll talk about that a bit later when we talk about the lights in detail uh, the actual dash itself not too keen on this if I turn around you can see it does its sweeping thing of course it's this bike is built to a price and that dash I don't think necessarily uh, does it justice uh, but otherwise the mirror is a bit stalky on here but I think they look all right and they're in keeping uh, with the bike and at the front end we've got uh, you know standard round headlight that just looks nice if you like a classic style motorcycle which I very much do okay so I reckon she looks pretty good what's it like to ride well it's great actually I have to say it's a comfy place to be this the handlebars feel nice and wide they all do these days don't they but these are uh, exactly you know your hands fall into a comfortable position you're sat uh, upright hopefully you can see on the 360 camera my riding position i'm lent a little bit forward but not in any sort of sporty way and my legs are at a sort of around about 90 degree angle maybe a little bit acute feels very similar to something like say a triumph bonneville or something like that it is an all-day comfortable riding position which is also aided by a very comfy seat let me show you that here it is really uh, thick padding on there that makes for a really comfortable seating experience so i like this sort of ribbed finish on here as well and the seat height on this a very comfortable 790 millimeters so ideal for shorties like me i'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg and i can flat foot this no problem at all okay as well as the comfort another standout feature on this bike for me is it's engine now this is the uh, same engine used in the uh, Meteor and the 350 or the classic 350 which I really enjoyed on those bikes and it's no different on this I would say on this bike it feels a little bit more peppy but I think that might be a trick of the mind because the exhaust on here makes it sound a bit more fruity than on those other bikes but it's a cracking little unit and it's one of the highlights of the bike as far as I'm concerned so here it is in that uh, cracking blacked out finish. It's a 349.3 cc single air cooled uh, unit. It puts out 20.4 PS at 6,100 RPM. That's 20.1 brake horsepower in the old money. And it puts out 27 Newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM. That's 20 foot pounds in the old money. So uh, not massive numbers, but great fun for the sort of bike that it is. Handling wise, this bike, it being so light, feels uh, really, really good. 
Now these roads at the moment are super bumpy. Don't know what's gone on with the roads this year. But the suspension on it feels, you know, it's set in, in a soft place. The suspension's not particularly complicated on this, but it does feel absolutely fine. I've not had it feel as if it's going out of shape or anything, but it's not a sort of bike that you can really push on with, because it's not that high powered a bike. But to me the suspension feels just right, it's in my infamous Goldilocks zone. While I'm going along here, let me just uh, try the brakes, there's nothing behind me. The front brake is really good. Let's try the rear, actually the rear is surprisingly good as well. Let's uh, go and take a look at the brakes and the suspension on this. So the brakes on the front then, 350mm disc with a twin pot caliper and this one's uh, badged by Bray, so that's the uh, value for money range from Bo um, Brembo. On the rear, a 270mm disc with a single pot caliper. And the suspension on this, up the front here, we've got a 41mm fork with 130mm of travel. And at the back, you've got this classic twin shot setup with uh, 102mm of travel. All right, well, no bike test would be complete with it without a little look at the lights and what the thing is like to ride at night. So let's have a look at the lights first in the daylight and then we'll try it at night and see how they work. So uh, let's turn the bike on so we can see what the normal sort of running light is on dip well, i don't know if you can see that very well through the camera but it looks well pretty dim actually that is a very dim dipped beam might be all right at night we'll see in a minute but uh yeah nothing special these are not led lights these are old-fashioned halogen if we put it on full beam here using this rotary switch which i quite like these switches actually there we go that's full beam and not significantly different. I wonder if it's because the bike's not running. Let's actually start her up in case I'm doing her a disservice. Right, now it says full beam. Ah, yeah, that's better. There we go. That's full beam and that is pretty flipping bright. Let's just go back down to uh, normal. Oh, yeah, that looks much better. All right, so the bike has to be running for the lights to be on properly. Well, okay, that's something I've learnt. All right, with the magic of uh, movies then, let's see how well they work at night. Well, the short answer is pretty good. They work pretty well at night. Here we are. It's, uh, it is dark now, it's not absolutely pitch black because I'm recording this in British summertime. But it is pretty dark and this is on dip. The uh, GoPro never shows lights very well on uh, bikes so I apologise for that, you'll have to take my word for it to a degree. But these are, are very good, given they're not LED lights, just standard halogen. On dip here, that's as good as any other bike I've ever ridden. If we go to full beam, there we go, absolutely throws out loads of light there, both in width and length. Really good indeed. So yeah, no problem with those. I was thinking they might be a bit rubbish because uh, they looked a bit dim when I did that test with the engine turned off. What a numpty. But actually, even though they are old-fashioned halogens at night time, look at this, they work absolutely perfectly well. I've had some cars with less good lights. The only thing I would say is that rotary switch to go between full beam or high beam and dip is not that intuitive to use. Again, if you rode the bike regularly, you'd get the hang of that. But uh, I'm not used to using a rotary switch for that. If you go, by the way, if I go to dip and air look, and then I, if I press that rotary switch all the way to the right, I can flash the lights like that. But anyway, yeah, the lights seem pretty good. In terms of uh, what else at night, well, you've got that dash, which is lit the same as it is during the day. It's not too bright, it's not dazzling, anything like that. So, uh, yeah, overall, it uh, seems pretty good to ride at night. There's nothing wrong with the lights. Switch gear is not lit, but you wouldn't expect that, and it's not very complicated switch gear anyway. But uh, yeah, lights seem pretty good. So for me, the Hunter really is a kind of ideal backlane scratcher. These sort of roads, these are the roads I ride the most. If I'm just going out for a Sunday blast, I've got a few loops around here. I could do a half hour loop, I've got an hour loop, and I've got a two hour loop that I like to ride. And on a day like today, with the sun out, it's a beautiful day. Spring flowers are just coming through. I'm recording this back end of April. Temperatures just getting to a nice level where you know you can go out for a ride. You don't have to be too trussed up, even though I've got all my gear on at the moment, of course. And it's just great fun on these lanes. You can kind of push on, or it feels like you are, without going silly speeds. You can really exercise the engine and you can get a lot of fun out of it. That's what I love about this size of bike. You don't have to be going at license losing speeds in order to have fun. Unlike the latest and greatest sports bikes and super nakeds. So it's a back lane scratcher, this is brilliant. It's all very well, but with such a small engine, what's it like on faster roads? Okay, so here I am on the dual carriageway then. Here in the UK, you're allowed to do 70 miles an hour on here. So I'm just holding a, a steady 70 miles an hour now, thereabouts. 
and the bike's absolutely fine. I'm not, uh, I'm not in fact fully maxed out on the throttle. I think you could wind it on a bit more. Uh, obviously, it's a naked bike, so I've got plenty of wind in my face. No particular um, protection, but it is, it is smooth airflow, so no issue there. So yeah, faster roads on the Hunter, no problem at all. So so far, there's not really lots I've found to not like about the bike. There are a few things about it that are a little bit odd. Maybe the clutch is a little bit stiff, but you get used to that. Maybe the side stand is a little bit stiff to put down. I'm not incredibly keyed on the uh, on the dash or the instrument either on here. It's uh, I quite like the fact it's a dial, but I know there's something about the design of it I'm not too keen on. It's offset on here because I think they've uh, left a space for that tripper navigation system that was uh, talked about a lot a few years back and I thought they were going to come as standard on Enfields now but it doesn't seem to be. It sounds like from the website it might be an option. I don't know, maybe it's a supply and demand, uh, supply issue thing that we've had a lot of recently and they can't get the mail on, I don't know. But anyway, there is room there for a tripper when they become available. But yeah, other than that there's not a lot to uh, dislike about it and a lot to love so uh, I'm going to make one more video about this bike, the sort of pros and cons, when I've ridden it for a bit longer, just before it goes back, I'm going to do a lessons learned type video, so uh, if you're interested in the bike, do uh, subscribe to the channel and that will be coming along in a few days time. Hello sir. I think that might have been a vit pillin, you don't see those very often on the road, in fact that might be the first one I've ever seen in the wild, how exciting. So as well as being great fun on these back roads, and nice and light, and excellent value as well, and talking of value, the price of these ranges from 3599 to 3679, uh, depending on what colour you go for. So sub four grand, whatever you do uh, with the Hunter. Uh, and that compares, for example, with the Classic, which is a similar spec bike. That comes in at 4159, so this is actually cheaper than the Classic. So hands up everybody who likes riding motorcycles in the rain and the wet. Yeah, not many takers there. And I have to admit, I'm not a massive fan either. It's all right if you're in the right kit, which I am. Keeps you warm and dry. But some bikes are better than others for riding in the rain as well, aren't they? And I have to say, the Enfield isn't actually one of those great bikes for riding in the rain for a number of reasons. First off, of course, it's a naked bike, so you are exposed to all the rain that's coming your way. There's no fairing to protect you. And then also, it's a basic bike, so of course, there's not much in the way of technology that could protect you in the rain. It does have ABS of course, it being a 350cc bike, anything over 125 needs to have ABS, so you have got that level of technology to protect you, but it doesn't have uh, traction control, things like that. But then, it's not a particularly powerful bike, you don't really need it anyway. So the weather's going to get you, because it's naked, technology's not going to help you, because it's a basic bike. And then the other thing, is the tyres I'm a bit sceptical about as well. They're cheapo tyres on here, they're from a brand I've never heard of before, a company called Seat, Keat, which is um, spelt C-E-A-T, and uh, I don't have a huge amount of faith in them in terms of the wet. Now again, it's not a particularly powerful bike, so it's not like you're gonna be absolutely thrashing it around the corners, etc. But I don't think I would trust them to do that. So I think what I'd do, if I had the Hunter 350, and I was, you know, riding it all weathers, commuting to work, whatever. I think one of the first upgrades I'd make to the bike is to buy some decent tyres for it. Some tyres from an own brand that give you some decent wet grip. So yeah, as far as riding the bike in the wet is concerned, for me, the jury is kind of out. All right, let's head up to uh, my local station, Great Missenden Station, where I always do my lugging about test. This is a little test to simulate what it'd be like moving the bike around in your garage or on your driveway to see if it's uh, difficult to move about and also to see what the turning circle is like so uh, let's get up the end here oh look at that car that's very nice ferrari what a beast nice all right let's come up here now somebody said park on the line rather than in a space because then we can actually see what the turning circle is like so right i'm on the line get her into neutral really easy to find neutral on this bike i have to say side sounds quite stiff but you know when you've got it down there we go, so we're on that line, and uh, let's just see what she's like to lift off the stand. It sits quite upright, doesn't lean over that much. So off the stand, very, very easy. I mean, it just, it does feel like a light bike, this. Let's come round here, and then hard round on the steering wheel, steering wheel, on the handlebars. Round we go, and I can tell, having done this test many times, that is a really tight 
turning circle. There we go, plonker then. It feels really light to lift off the stand as well. Weight of this, 181 kilograms on the road. So that was, believe it or not, from that line there, all the way around 180 degrees, possibly one of the tightest turning circles on any bike that I've ever tested. Uh, and it feels very light as well with that nice and easy to manage 181 kilograms. And that's the wet weight, so without fuel, even less obviously. So uh, yeah, nice and light, excellent turning circle. It's just super easy to live with. You can move it around your garage easily. There's nothing complicated about it. You can just wear a pair of riding jeans, jump on and nip down the shops. It's great. I'm a big fan of it. I'm a fan of all the uh, 350cc Royal Enfields. This engine, I think, is an absolute blinder. And I guess you sort of decide what style of bike you like and take your pick. I personally really like the Classic because I just like the, the looks of that bike. But this is probably my next favourite of the 350s. I just think it looks a lot nicer than the Meteor. Rides very similar, nothing wrong with the Meteor. But this I just think it's got a better modern look. And I also love the colours that this comes in. Royal Enfield have really paid attention to the colourways that, color that their bikes come out in. So the colours on this, Royal Enfield have split into two sets. There's sort of basic colours that they call the dapper colours, and then there's the rebel colours. This is one of the rebel colours, they tend to be the matte ones with the writing on. Uh, and it comes in the following, so there's dapper white, dapper ash, which is a light grey, uh, or dapper grey, which is a darker grey. Uh, then there's rebel black, rebel blue, which is this one, or rebel red. And to be fair, I think they all look pretty good. I'm not even sure which my favourite one is, they're all great. This particular one is in this matte blue, and uh, I do like it. But it is matte, so I'm not entirely sure how that's going to last long term. I've got a bit of a thing about matte bikes. I've never owned one, so I might be talking rubbish here, but uh, I just think looking after a glossy bike is possibly a better way to go. Hello, sir. There's lots of bikers out today enjoying the sunshine. But as I say, plenty of colours to choose from on the Hunter 350, so just take your pick, really. Matte or gloss, they're all there. What haven't I talked about? So a couple of things I haven't mentioned. First off, uh, on the fuel tank here, I mentioned I love the look of it, but it's actually a 13 litre fuel tank that, and uh, this bike will be pretty flipping frugal. I've been riding it, as I say, for a couple of weeks now, quite a bit, and I haven't even got through uh, one tank yet. The other thing I haven't mentioned are electronics, because there's not an awful lot of electronics on here. It does have an LED tail light. The rest of the lights are filament halogen, uh, as you saw in the night section. And then the other thing to mention is it's got a little USB port just here, look, so you can plug in your sat nav or whatever, which is quite handy as well. But other than that, uh, no electronics to talk about. Actually, something I haven't mentioned is the gearbox on here. And the reason why I haven't mentioned it is because it's very good. So it's, it's not noticeable in that uh, I've never had a false neutral on this. I've had no problem finding neutral, and that can often be the case on bikes, can't it? But this is absolutely fine. And it's very positive in gear change. You know when you've changed gear, you don't miss gears. It's a very nice gearbox on here. I mentioned the clutch was a little bit stiff, but you'll get used to that. I don't think it's a slipper clutch on here. These days, most modern bikes have slipper clutches, which basically mean you can afford to be a bit hand-fitted and if you come off the clutch quickly in a lower gear it will forgive you for doing so but on this if you change down too quickly get another hello sir if you change down too quickly and then you're hand-fisted with the clutch she will let you know and slow down quite quickly through the engine braking not an issue just something to be aware of you'll quickly become aware of that when you ride it okay so it's all very well bimbling around on the local lanes for your review tmf but what about the urban environment what's the bike like around town and in the suburbs that sort of thing well i've come out to uh, amersham which is uh, not exactly a massive city but it's quite a busy little town to see how the bike is in a bit of traffic and i have to say the bike is brilliant in a bit of traffic because it is so light and nimble and manageable it's great just for nipping around traffic filtering and that sort of caper no problem at all so if you do need uh, a bike to get you to work and you're going through a town or city to do so then this is going to be absolutely no issue. You're sitting quite nice and upright as well. So you've got a good view over the traffic. You can see what's coming to a degree. So you can plan your routes. What's this Beamer doing? Indicating left. And indeed turning left. Fair enough. So in the urban environment, as you'd expect, the little Hunter is an excellent proposition. So there we go. That's my ultimate review of the Hunter 350. Hope you've enjoyed that. I've really enjoyed riding the bike today, particularly in this weather, it's been absolutely cracking. Don't forget, stick around and stay tuned to the channel for that final uh, video on the bike, where I've got to sort of sum up the pros and cons of the bike. 
and uh, if you've not been to the channel before don't forget to uh, subscribe It'd be great to have you along next time thanks to you for watching thanks to Royal Enfield for lending me the bike for review I look forward to speaking to you again soon until then this has been the Missenden Flyer cheerio